welcome to the Choir Directors Academy. I am your host, Angela Elaine. Um, I appreciate each of you joining me on tonight. It's kind of cold here, so uh, we got a turtleneck on. It was uh, 40, 45 degrees today, so it was cold. You know, in, the, in, in Chicago, we have the hawk, the wind that blows, so that probably took you down to probably 39 or so. So we are already in our winter stuff, and I'm one of those people that once the weather changes, I'm done. I'm staying there until it changed for the better. Um, but I would like to thank each and every one of you for all of your likes, your shares, your referrals, everything that you do to help me get the word out about the Choir Directors Academy. I really, truly appreciate it because you don't have to do it. People have busy schedules. There's so many of us out here um, that have videos that are doing things. And you can you can support anybody that you choose choose to. And I appreciate you all tuning in, choosing me, uh, choosing the Choir Directors Academy to uh, do this. And I'm not going to be very long on tonight. Is uh, You know me. I usually try to keep everything um, under 30 minutes because I know people are busy and, you know, it's a busy time. This is uh, Bible class night. Uh, we're still in the pastor's appreciation going on. This is mid-month. So we have a lot of things going on, uh, not only in the church world, but also in your second, in your regular lives. You have a lot of things going on. Hey, Deatrice, you have a lot of things going on. So we want to make sure that we uh, acknowledge, hey, Deatrice, we want to make sure that we acknowledge uh, that everybody's time is precious. <laughs> everybody's time is precious but I just want to give a special shout out and thank everybody for whatever you do to help me get the word out in regards to the Academy I'm just here to as a little soul just trying to help people get along and understand exactly what their job is their job entails so every like every share every repost every comment I truly truly appreciate it those those of you who are on YouTube, I appreciate you getting the word out as well, hitting that subscribe button and letting people know that we are we actually doing something. We're out here. There's somebody out here that's willing to share a word in regards to being a choir director, and I appreciate you being out here. Um, I'm not gonna be long tonight, as I already said. Um, hey Shanita, um, but I just want to give a few um, few basic principles that I learned in being. Um, performing and you know everybody knows award-winning i don't really thank you deatrice i don't really like promote that other people promote it more than i do <laughs> they promote everything that i do more than i do and i appreciate that i'm just not that kind of person i'm not i know about marketing but i just don't do that but i appreciate that but i just want to share a few pointers to, with everybody in regards to uh core performance a lot of times there is preparation before you do it uh, but most people, they don't think about it. They just run up and they say, okay, we're singing. We have an aggregation of people. We come together. They throw the notes out. People sing, sound however they want to sing. You can sing according to your interpretation. And then when they uh, present, um, stand before people and sing, they don't get the reaction that they do or they don't get the phone calls that they want or they don't, they don't get the recognition or the... Uh, response from people that they're expecting uh and a lot of times it's not so much that you're not in harmony it's just that you need to tweak a few little things that's all you know and a lot of people don't know that and, and even if they know they um they don't encourage you or tell you about it they just sit there and let you just be wrong or they sit there and they don't share anything and then you consistently going on but i'm a believer in i believe that there is a way to share information thank you shanita i really do i really appreciate that um um you know i don't believe in sitting there and seeing someone going in error there is a way to talk to people and to let them know you know you kind of need to pull that around another way um, but I like to share that information. I don't like to see. I believe that everybody can do better. Everybody has a spot. And just because it doesn't take anything from me to give to you. You understand what I'm saying? Because no matter what I give out, you're going to interpret it the way that you hear it. And whatever I've learned through the grid, my mind that I have endured or that I've learned or I've experienced, it's going to come out different anyway. And it takes nothing from me to share. And I think if everybody kind of felt that way, then it would be better because and then people would learn and they would do better. Some people really want to do better, but they just need somebody to give them some pointers. 
Um, and that's what I'm doing tonight. Just high level. I will do a part two. So uh, with this, we'll go into more detail. But right now, I'm just doing a very high level, 35,000 feet in the air view of basic principles that I apply that help me be successful. Number one, we always know practice makes perfect. Some people try to do things without practicing. You cannot do things if you want to progress to the next level. That's what I'm saying. Some people don't care. But if you want to progress to the next level, there is there are certain things that you need to do. You need to practice. You need to be consistent in what you're doing. Hey, Pastor Perry, you need to be consistent in what you're doing in order to um, bring about the changes that you want. Um, the main thing, when you're getting ready to do a core performance, even if it's at a local church, it doesn't matter. You have to see all performances the same. Some people don't. You know, they say, okay, I'm going to this little church. It doesn't matter. You know, nobody. No. Then if you're, if, you're, if you're reacting to situations based on your audience or, or what's going on, then you might need to check what you're doing, okay? For me, it doesn't matter if it's a small church or big church, if I'm singing with, you know, on the stage with celebrities or not. Doesn't matter. My choir sings the same no matter where we go. I expect perfect diction. I expect volume. I expect the spirit, first of all, but I expect excellence. Now, if we foul short, okay, you know, mistakes happen, but I require that in every, it, it, and they know wherever we go, I don't, I don't care. I don't care if they only got 15 people in that church. You're going to get up and sing because you're not singing to the people. You have to remember who you're singing for and who you're singing to you know, you're there to encourage. You're not there for celebrity status. You're there to encourage the people that are there. So when you're doing your performances, make sure you're punctual. That, that is like the worst thing you can do is come sing anywhere and be late. When you're rushing, your spirit is not in tune. You, you got too much going on, you, you, you know. And I always tell, you know, I was thinking about the movie Drumline when, um, oh, God, I just forgot his name. Um, Dr. Lee, he said, if you're five, mil, finish, five minutes early, you're on time. If you're on time, you're late. Learn, train the people to get there early. You need to get there early so you can get acclimated to your environment. You can settle yourself down. If you're rushing, you all know when we rush to work, we, we flustered, we frustrated, you're mad, you get upset because somebody jumped in front of you and you, you're walking too slow. You know, it's too much going on. The same thing when you perform. If everybody gets there at the last minute, you're going to be discombobulated. You're not going to come in with the spirit. You're not going to flow like you really want to do. So be punctual. That last minute stuff just don't work for me. And I tell all of my choir members, if the service started at 730, at least be sitting in your car at 715 on the parking lot. Just relax. Turn, you know, just get your mind, you know, whatever. Because if you run in that door, it takes you 15 minutes to really get yourself together. It really does. We know that when we go to work. You run in the door, you start at 7.30, you run in the door, you, you, you messed up pretty much all day. By the time you get straight now, the day is almost over. Same thing. And how can you minister in the spirit when you're flustered? Doesn't work. It just doesn't work. Another thing, um, a lot of, this is very, very controversial, and a lot of people don't like to talk about it. Um, and I've gotten multiple requests to talk about it and that's appearance and i'm going i'm just doing it high level when you dress comfortably and you like the way you look you know what i'm saying when you dress nice you feel good about yourself you don't have that worry um about what i got on you know how do i look or whatever else i don't you know i tell the choir um and uniformity is always good and i'm that's a whole nother section when i get to appearance i got another show to do on that but i'm saying that you should make sure that you look nice so you, you can be comfortable a lot of people think that um it's not important and to a degree it's not important but it does have an effect on how people receive you, especially when they don't know you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, it, it just says something about you when you take pride in your appearance and you realize, you know, I'm going to make this point. It's like when we go anywhere for, for man or whatever, Anywhere else we go, they tell us we got to do this, 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 and that, black tie, whatever. I don't care what, it, what they tell you, jeans, whatever. We do that with no issues, no qualms, no nothing. Then how about when we're ministering to people 
for God in his house or even out on the, out on the street. Why don't we have a certain um, dignity about what we're doing so that it won't interfere? We don't want, my, my point is, when you're ministering on behalf of God, <laughs> you don't want anything you're doing to take away from what you're doing. Uh, Pastor Perry said, can you sing wherever you're calling? No, 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 I already tried that. And a lot of people, when your clothes are too tight, it's really not healthy. And I have a nurse on here, but it's really not healthy to have your clothes too tight because you're cutting off circulation and you cannot breathe and sing properly when you're close, when you're not comfortable. It takes away from what you're doing. You know, you, you when and when you're uncomfortable, that translates into your spirit. You can't do an effective job when you are, and and it does. I mean, it it you you don't want in, any of your actions to be a distraction from your purpose. You don't want your actions to be a distraction from your purpose. At that time, when you're standing before people, you're standing as a representative of God. You're standing there with your spirit calm and everything so that he can flow through you and bless the people. That's the end result. Blessing people, not you becoming popular, not you becoming a sensation. It's about you blessing people. You understand what I'm saying? It's like um, Sunday. See the nurses on there, Deatra. She said, "Truth, you cannot breathe properly. You really can. Not when your clothes are, you know. I mean, and you can dress nice. I'm all for dressing nice. I'm, I'm, I'm a fashionista. I, you know, you know. But at the same time, when I stand before people, I want to make sure I'm comfortable on all fronts. So I don't, you know, because when you're directing the choir, basically your back is to the people. Sometimes in some uh, services, the choir may be in the audience and you direct in fat frontal." But most of the time, your back is to them. So you need to do a 360 look when you're at home and make sure that you are presentable with how you how you are so you can do an effective job. When you know that things are not proper, you you can't really, you, you stiff. You know what I'm saying? You kind of like, and everybody knows that you're one of these people. Uh, and then you're standing there like, you know, like you, you know, you, you can't do a good job. You can't. You can't. You can't. Pastor Perry said, now nah, that was good. Seriously, you don't want your actions to be a distraction. Because then people are going to sit there, spend most of their time looking at you. Like, really? You know, they didn't hear anything you say. They just <laughs> sitting there occupying the seat. You, you know what my father always told me? You don't want to make people glad twice. Glad to see you get up and glad to see you sit down. Because you were more of, you know, you want people to be enhanced. You want them blessed when you get up. But I was thinking Sunday, this, just this past Sunday, um, I had some songs in mind to sing. And then uh, when the pastor told me, he said, I want one song. You know, I had my whole, you know, list sitting up there. He said, I want one song, just it. And I was sitting there, I'm like, oh, man, this is doing an offering. And I'm like, wow. You know, because you don't know everybody's situation when you're sitting in church anyway. And I, so then the spirit dropped, the spirit dropped the song. And he said, I came to tell you he won't fail. No, he won't fail. You know, so I'm like, we ain't practice on that, but okay, we gonna do it. Did not know that one of the members was on her way to the doctor uh, because she has this huge uh, cyst or gourd or something on her neck. I didn't know. Um, and she said, I remember her mentioning it to me, but I didn't, you know, I didn't know how serious it was. Didn't know that she had to go to the doctor to get a biopsy and they had to check it out and everything. And she said that that song, I didn't know what I was doing because I started playing something else and then I changed to that song. And she said that song played in my mind all Sunday night, all day Monday, all day Tuesday till I got my results. And turns out it's benign. It's not, it's not cancer. Is that the right word? It's not cancerous. But I didn't know. I was just following the spirit and singing the song and just going on. And she said, when you were playing and you all were singing, it just blessed me. And that song played in my mind and it helped her get through to what she had to go through. So that's what I'm saying. You have to make sure that whatever you doing, she was just like, you just look so whatever you, you know, so you have to make sure that everything about you is right. Everything about you is right. Make sure that you're doing your best. Make sure, I'm just recapping real quick. Make sure that what you're doing is really for the glory of God and not for your own um, 
prestige. For me, it's not about prestige at all. Cause I, I, I you know, I have to <laughs> do too much before I get up and do what I do. Another thing, um, I learned, um, with the choir, choral positions, how you have the people standing strategically you need to be concerned how you have people standing case in point i used to just let you know you see people get up a choir get up and they said come and call the choir and the choir just stand anywhere <laughs> everybody just bunch up and whatever else and i'm sitting there and i'm listening and i you know i'm not that i'm being super critical or whatever but i just critique that's my job you know um and i'm listening and i can hear it's like, you know how some people hair, their hair when they, they wear it down and it's jagged like that, you know, or heartbeat is jagged. That's how I hear the sounds. And it's like, rrr, 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 rrr. and it's not blending. It's not coming together. It's just like, and they may have harmony, but it's not, it's like, it's not hitting it. It's just like, wow. You could be so much better, you know, cause I'm listening. I'm like, okay, now that person is strong and that person is weak and that person is whiplashing, you know, and you know, cause I have somebody in my choir, she whiplashes. She's always two or three seconds behind everybody in the choir. I don't care. And she always try to stand on the end and I have to move her. <laughs> I said, no, put you, I put her in between a strong person and a medium. Cause you have different, you have your strong people. Those, and I'm, when I say strong, not necessarily, um, you know, loud, but strong as in, you know, um, their passion is there. They learn the songs. They're true. You know, they know the part. So they may be strong. And then you have somebody who's medium. They know their part, but they don't have that thrust when they sing. And then you have some, some people in the choir who are weak. Um, they know they can sing the note but they're not they're not sure you can drill them you can work with them and what but they still not sure so you have to strategically put these people in places in order for the blend the voices that was my next point for the voices to blend because if you have all you know most of the time with these huge choirs now if you got a huge choir 50 70 people you can put all your strong put a good number of your strong people in front i personally think you need to mix it up but you can put strong people in front and then scatter the medium and a couple other strong people throughout the choir i do that i would do that because even sometimes when i work with the state choir i like to do that because that gives you need people at different points that are strong to help the weak and the mediums sing out some people just cannot sing out properly and that's what i do i strategically put them i you know and you you know how you see choirs and they have the sopranos the tenors in the middle and then they have the altos on one side the tenors are basically there you have a strong one the strong ones on the outside that that are next to the voices and then you put the weaker ones in the middle the tenors are the backbone they're the structure of the choir they are the settlers they are the ones that keep every they're like the level levelers so you have everybody you have your ends with strong people that's how i always do my ends are always the strong people in the tennis section and then i put everybody else in the middle because it is almost like a ping pong you listen this way you you're not that strong so if you listen this way you got a strong voice here you listen this way you got a strong voice there so that makes the people in the middle sing out and they're going to stay in tune because that's all they're hearing between they bouncing between two strong pillars um on the ends my sopranos i generally have a strong person then a weak one a medium person a weak one and then maybe a strong one but then i have that person on the end that's um strong enough to you know not be loud and abrasive but how to blend in you must teach them how to blend in everyone have the same vocal shape with your mouth you know, some people, they sing. I take the time to train uh, my choir how to sing properly from the, you know, you know, a lot of people hate that, but from the diaphragm, pushing it up. And then you don't have to be so dramatic. Um, I can tell just easily when somebody is singing from their throat, it's just like, it's, it's like a can. It's so empty. There's no volume. You can have 10 people. And if you train them properly to sing from their diaphragm, to resonate, to open up that cavity, to open up the throat, and let that sound come out 
10 people will sound like 30 folks, 30, 40 people. Sound like a crowd, a mass. And if you train them to sing properly with their mouths, I know growing up they used to tell us sing like you got an egg in your mouth, and it was just to make you open up. And it gives you such a rounded sound when everybody, doesn't matter if they're strong, medium, or weak, everybody's shaped the same way. Most of the time in our choirs, we don't sing. Everybody sings how they think they want to sing. You know, some people, you know, mouth twisted, and some people singing back, and some people sing with their head to the side. You know, no, everybody should be standing straight, chant straight, back straight, face, everything, chin is level with the floor to make sure there are no um, restrictions. There's nothing in, you know, in the way causing any like cutoffs or any barriers. You wanna keep that. That affects your sound. And you know, some people wonder, my choir is not doing so many um, outside engagements now because I'm doing all of this. <laughs> it's keeping me busy. But when I do have them, they know when they get up because most of the time I'm always singing with a skeleton crew because people have schedules and nurses and, you know, they have these night jobs. So they have, you know, I always sing with a skeleton crew, but I always make sure that they know how to resonate. They know how diction is key. Diction, always make sure that you pronounce your words. And a lot of times in some choirs, we just slur them. People don't know what we're saying, but all of that is important. So while you're learning how to sing properly, keeping your chin level with the floor, so you don't have any restrictions. It's also important to learn how to speak clearly so that people understand that you're saying near the cross and not near the cross. You know what I'm saying? All of that has an impact on your performance. And they know when you're speaking clearly, when you're taking the time to breathe and train yourself to breathe properly, um, they know that you, you're invested in what you're doing. It's just not a pastime. It's not something we just throw together. But you're investing in what you're doing. You have to do that. You have to do that. And it's really not that hard because once you get people started, once they get on the road and they see how they sound, a lot of times I mentioned like, ooh, back in May, sometimes I record the choir and let them hear themselves so they can hear what I'm hearing. And, you know, a lot of times um, they got upset with me because they thought I was doing extra. Okay. <laughs> all right whatever but you're gonna do this anyway <laughs> and i say it with a smile and a laugh but i record them and let them hear themselves and then they're sitting there going oh my god did we really sound like that that's what i'm hearing and then you, you can imagine if that's what i'm hearing then what is the audience hearing you want them to be able to hear you to enjoy what you're doing at the same time receiving what the spirit is saying height adjustments we you know generally we like to see you know it looks good to have the, 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 the triangle, but it may not be necessarily the best thing for you to do when it comes to your choir. It may not be the necessarily the best thing. You What you try to do, um, I suggest to some choirs that they kind of have two rows. You know how you have a, you, you may have three people and you have one slightly behind and two in front. You may have to do that in order to get those voices lined up because you don't want, you really don't want, um, a jagged sound you want it to blend and be smooth like butter and it doesn't matter you know height is not as important to me as the blended sound and arranging the people according to technique and style and abilities okay because i remember when i was at house week the sound and uh my judges were um uh, marvin sap it was uh marvin sap um dorinda clark cole karen clark cole Clarence Cox Shear, who she get me if she heard that. Um, and then it was Donna Lawrence and CC Winans was there. I don't, she didn't really, she wasn't a judge, but she had some input. Um, but the thing that they, I listened to, you know, cause you get to hear everybody's review. Some of them were good and some of them were bad, but they critiqued everybody and kind of told you what you need to do. And that's, um, I was glad I did that. Nobody told me to do it, but I remember Marvin Sapp talking to one of, I think like one of the choirs behind me that performed after we did. And he pointed out to the director, he said, you should not have them standing like that. Your sound is not correlated. It's not flowing. You got, you, you, you're not going according to height. But then you're also not going according to how they are. And it, it, it hurt me because I'm standing there going, oh, my God. It's so embarrassing because it was thousands. You know, the United Center where the Bulls play, it was thousands of people in there. 
And he was, but he was telling him the truth though. Cause when I heard it, I was like, Oh my God, you know, it was just like, it, it didn't flow. And, and, and he was letting them know you need to situ situate your people so that when their voice, when they sing, don't have all of these strong people in front, blend them throughout the choir. So they will help the weaker ones, um, come through because you got all this sound in the front and we don't hear nothing from the back. You know, because there they had mics. And the reason he could say that, because um, they had mics all over the stand. It wasn't like most of the time when you go to a concert, they just got the mics in the front and then you got the specialized call out singers, the background singers in the front. And you don't even hear the back. There are no mics back there. But when we were on that stage, we had mics everywhere. So they heard everything you did. So if you were weak, you know, they heard it. Everybody heard it. And so when you're standing there, we couldn't see everything that was going on, but you could hear the crowd. You could hear the crowd and you could hear pinfalls. It, it was just like quiet because when you heard them singing, it was like, oh my God, <laughs> you know? And I was thankful that God blessed me to understand that before I got to the stage. Um, they did say some things about us, but it was very minor compared to um, what everybody else had done and which eventually was how we won. Um, but I encourage you, listen to your choir learn the voices learn identify your strong your weak and your medium and organize those sections according to that yes ma'am ain't that a good principle the strong help the weak exactly exactly and it's the same thing you know people don't realize that they you know they're just like oh you know we have sing. no there is a there's a method to this that will help your choir grow and see that helps people grow you know what Everybody has somebody they kind of lean on a little bit. I mean, even me as a director, I do have other directors that I kind of, you know, I kind of lean on them and like, okay, critique me, let me know where I need to come up. And then they got somebody they're leaning on. So, I mean, you know, nobody is super strong in everything that you do. So do you need somebody else to kind of be there to kind of, that's already traveled that road that can tell you, look, I hit that bump. You don't have to do that. And that's the purpose of me having this academy. Help everybody get to where you're trying to get to faster so that you can grow and move on to the next thing. Why, was, why, should, you, why should I sit here and hold all this in when I can give it to somebody else and help them? You know, it's all about helping the people behind because you know what? When I was back there, somebody was in front of me and passed the information to me. And it helped me become who I am today. And now a lot of my instructors um, that was back in the day, they didn't reach the status. They didn't get a chance to sing at the United Center. They didn't get a chance to, you know, win awards and things of that sort. But it's joy to them to see me out front, to see me accomplish things. So my thing is, well, hey, somebody did it to me. Even though I'm reaching back, I'm actually paying it forward. I'm actually doing that. So help your choir understand that just because a person is weak doesn't mean that they don't know what to do they just need a little more confidence and you standing there singing and giving all you got helps develop their confidence because a lot of times their confidence is in the fact that they think i don't know the note i'm not so sure about my note but when they sit stand next to somebody that's singing and I, you know okay i'm gonna help you hey work with me you know i'm with you that develops them and eventually that weak person will become a medium person the medium person will become a strong person and then your whole choir you have a choir full of strong people and as you add on you strategically place them in different areas and it'll help your choir develop that's how you do it that's how you do it again blending the voices teaching them how to have a rounded sound that always helps that that's that's key you want them to sound as one I always tell my sopranos, all of you are, I should not hear five or six variations of one note. There is only one E. Now, it may be at four, it may be below middle C, it may be above middle C, but I don't want to hear five different variations of one note. All of you all have, should have one sound. All sopranos should sing the same note at the same time with diction and authority. All of you should be the same. Altos, all of you should be the same. Timoners, Aaron, exactly, it's a domino effect. All tenors should hear one voice. So I hear one voice in the sopranos, one in the altos, one in the tenors. Guess what? When they all come together, they're all going to blend and sound good. It's going to be one mellow sound, just smooth. And you know what? And it, I mean, it just sound. and people just sit there like, wow. But it's a technique, and it takes time to get there. 
But if you're consistent and persistent, they'll get there. It'll get in their spirits, and you'll be surprised. Even if you only have seven people singing, people be like, oh, my God, they sound like a host of people because I took the time to train them. And just because some person doesn't get the note, don't frown and breathe. <sighs> you know, no. What you do is you close your eyes and pray. God help them to get that note because we're not moving until they get it. You understand what I'm saying? It promotes a family atmosphere in the choir. Even though, you know, we're part of the church, we're part of the fivefold ministry, but at the same time, we're an entity within ourselves. We cannot defeat the enemy if we all separate it. And that's another reason for blending the voices, to help let them know to work together. You got to work together. You got to be together. We all in this together. We all got to pray for one another. We all got to help one another. You understand what I'm saying? And when you promote that harmony and that unity in the group, they, it'll come out in their singing. Sometimes I hear choirs and it's just like all over the place, you know, notes everywhere. And I'm like, these people are not together. You know, it's divisions in the choir. It's attitudes in the choir. But when everybody, it, as a director, that's your job to promote unity, promote togetherness. You don't allow all of these different things popping up in the choir and all these different attitudes and I don't want to stand next to you and I don't. No, we can't, you know, we can't be anointed with all this, all this stuff going on. We need to crack open the Bible and get the teaching because this ain't working. And I'm working too hard to have all, you know, I had that where it was just divisions. It was just, you know, whatever. And I'm like, oh no, we got to shut this down. This, this is not working. You know, and they kind of looked at me like I was crazy. Well, I don't know. If you're going to do it, you're going to stay in here. You're going to do it or else you take a vacation. And, you know, the people that was keeping all of that stuff, I started giving them vacations. Because everybody, they didn't think I was serious. I'm like, no, I will stand up here with five people. I don't care. You can't, we're not going anywhere anyway. So then I had to break them down and work with them and get them to see you know, the sections and everything and work with them to get those voices blended, work with them and let them understand we are together. We are better together. And once they understood that, the music started coming together. Cause you know, acapella, you cannot sing acapella and folks got funny, funny ways. <laughs> you can't do it. Cause it, you, you, you like, Oh my God, y'all sound bad. You can't do it. So, and me specializing in acapella singing, I can't afford that. Neither can God. God's ears, he don't want to hear that. He wants to hear a melodious sound. Even though he told us to make a joyful noise, but if we got an aggregation of people, it should sound good. It should sound joyful and good. Um, remind them what their purpose is. When you're getting ready to perform, remind them of what their purpose is. It's not show. We, this is not for show and tell. This is to magnify God, to bring, bring glory to his name, and to encourage the people. This is directed at church choirs, to bring glory to his name. Even some of the community choirs, you know, I mean, there are different, different rules for each section, you know, secular versus community versus church. Um, but sometimes the church choir try to act like the secular in the community. You can't do that. <laughs> You, your sole purpose is to bring glory to God and to bless the hearts of the people and to prepare the people, prepare the hearts of the people for the word. That's your job. That, that, that is what we're here for. And as the leader, you definitely got to be in sync for that. Uh, most importantly, even though I didn't start with it, but it's very important that you start with prayer. Pray, bring everybody's, <laughs> you need to pray. You know, um, some people try to do it without prayer, you know, okay, if it works for you. But I always pray, you know, get the pastor to pray for us if we go somewhere and say, please pray for us. Not only that we, for protection, but that we all operate as one. Whenever you have an aggregation of people that operate as one, you can do so much. You can accomplish so much. You can just, I mean... I love to see it just flow. It just blesses my heart to just see any aggregate. I love to see any aggregation. I mean, the coolest thing is like even in the military, when you see them doing pass and review, I was in ROTC and I was part of the captain's team, um, captain's unit at the, four, at the um, you had the captain and then you had a staff. I was the one right behind, staff right before the honor guard. That was me. So when we did pass and review, it's a wonderful thing when you got A, B, and C companies and you got all of the captains in order. Everybody is lined up, dress right dress. We're all in the columns. And when we do the pass and review, everybody, you know, salute. 
It's just a beautiful thing to see that. And I love to see everybody pushing this one. Stri I strive for that same thing. Even in the jurisdiction, I strive for the same thing. Uh, whenever I'm up doing it, when they allow, when I do get a chance to direct, I try to promote unity and everything. Hey, Calvin. Um, and then my final thing, yeah, I'm keeping this short, y'all. Uh, my final thing uh, for your performances, and it's very important, is right below prayer. Have your choir um, to consecrate themselves. You know what I'm saying? And I'm saying this in the sense that, you know, a lot, I know we have our social media craze and I'm not on it as much as I used to be due to me having the, uh, the, the academy and taking on new roles. So I don't have as much time as I did before. But we, before I do any kind of performance, um, church, you know, for, you know, church or anything, I tell everybody in the choir, shut it down. You cannot do a job. You can't sing under the anointing <laughs> you and up to the last minute you on facebook laughing and playing and clowning and you or you with this person laugh you can't do that you have to shut yourself down shut out influences and keep your mind together so that you can do what you need to do and i encourage people to do that you know because it's just a it just makes the job easier when everybody has one mind we're focusing we're aligning ourselves with one another, but most importantly, you lining yourself with God. Shut, shut it down. Consecrate. Meditate on your music. Don't just be all willy-nilly with whatever you're doing. Pull yourself in so that you can do it. You can be effective. Nobody wants to do anything, and it's not impress. It's not doing anything. It's not blessing anybody. You're wasting time. <laughs> you could be doing something else. You know. So encourage your choir. Not just get up and sing and, oh, we just going to sing. No, 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 no. Don't be so confident in them that, oh, they're going to get up and do this. Trust me, Ricky Dillard with his choir, and I love them. They dress nice. They sing well. But they have to, he requires that they bring themselves in. You know, you just don't, you know, even though they do a little more entertainment than the normal, they're a community choir, but even them, they do consecrate. They know that they have to bring it in. Whenever you're doing anything for God, you have to bring it in. Separate yourself. Block out everything so that you can do a good job. Okay? Those are the basic things that I learned um, being a director, directress, um, that were useful for me, that has helped me win countless competitions and things of that sort. And I just wanted to share those, little, those things with you. Again, I'm going to do a part two probably, I'm thinking December. I may do, because um, I got two guests coming in in November, so I won't be doing much talking in November. And then I have two weeks off because one week we're in convocation, and then also we got Thanksgiving. I'm not going to work the day before, before we eat that turkey. Uh, <laughs> and, I'm, you know, I'm sure everybody's busy cooking, running around, doing things, so I want to keep that in consideration. Um, but uh, those are some things that I learned that I implemented with the choir. And it doesn't matter if your choir is 10 people, 20 people, 100 people. It doesn't matter. If you love what you do, you're going to do the same job no matter how many people you have. And that's why I try to tell people, when it's really in you and you love what you're doing, it doesn't matter how many people there are, you're going to do the best that you can be. You're going to be the best that you can be. You're going to do the best job. Why? Because it's your passion, it's your gift, it's, your, it's what God has deposited in your spirit. He's given that gift to you, and your gift to him is to give him your best. So I hope I said something to help everybody, help you out, like, share the video. I appreciate you all being here with me. Calvin, Miriam, oh, Miriam, you're normally in class right now. Um, Deatra's been with me since the beginning. Pastor Perry, Aaron Simpson, um, Don Mayberry was here. Pray for Don Mayberry. They're, they're looking for his cousin. So you all keep Don in your prayers. Um, my cousin Shanita was on here and there's so other people that are on here. You didn't leave a comment. So, you know, if you're on here and I don't, uh, see your name, leave a comment. So I know you're out there. I want to give credence to everybody acknowledge everyone. Cause I appreciate, I appreciate you all being here with me. Cause if you weren't here, I'd be by myself, but I still do my job anyway. I do it if I got three people or if I got 25. I love what I do, and I love you. You all be blessed. Have a good night. Have a great weekend. I'm about to go work out, and then I'm going to bed. Yeah, that's another thing, y'all. We need to exercise and keep ourselves up and running, okay? <laughs>
Yeah, Miriam, I thought you just got out of class. I know Wednesday you were in class. Yeah, so you all be blessed. Get some rest. Um, and everybody just be blessed. Have a good night. And I love each of you. Share, like, whatever, whichever way you go. I'm appreciative. I love everybody. Thank you, D. Miss Texas, my friend. That's my girl right there. Thank God for all of you. And have a wonderful evening. And peace.